You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. This episode is brought to you by Hyperice, the leader in advanced warm-up and recovery technology. They have tons of innovative products, like Venom-heated wearables to help soothe sore back muscles, Normatec compression boots to speed up recovery and increase circulation, and Hypervolt massage guns to improve mobility. Loved by athletes like Naomi Osaka and Erling Holland. Try them yourself. Get 10% off your order with the code MOVE at hyperrice.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Podcast. I am your host and resident panelist, as always, Ryan Flip. Check us out online, packernet.com. Find me on Twitter, pack underscore daddy. I do sincerely apologize about yesterday. I was very confident that I would be able to uh, get a podcast done. That's my bad. As my wife reminded me on the drive home, um, I tend to underestimate how long things take. And I think it's just because my brain refuses to acknowledge, you know, is over ought. In other words, get your shoes on and get out the door. In my brain, ought to take 40 seconds is, meaning the reality, is that we're talking about 45 minutes. And so even though as I'm doing the math in my head, I'm going, all right, if we do this this time, that'll take five minutes. And blah, blah, blah. There's a little voice in my head going, dude, that ain't real. The counter to that voice is, well, it needs to be real because that's as long as it should take, and then I can get my stuff done. But, you know, basically I lie to myself is what I'm saying. Uh, we did end up going down to Brookfield, Illinois. We had to go to a funeral. So we went down Tuesday. I was able to record Tuesday's podcast on Tuesday morning. It was late. I know. I'm, I've been... Slacking, but stuff is crazy. Whole lot going on lately. Um, but I did get that one done, and then we drove down. Uh, there was a viewing on Tuesday, so we were there for, uh, I believe, a few hours. Went back to the hotel, did a little bit of swimming. We were going to go to Benihana, because I was all about it. I was going to relive my childhood, be like, dude, we're going to Embassy Suites and Benihana, man. That was like the apex when I was a kid. We That was like a mini vacation. You know, instead of like going somewhere nice, we would just go down to the embassy suites and like spend a night there or a, you know, a day there. And, um, I don't know if they ever correlated to the same thing, but another like super once a year, like we're doing it big kind of thing was going to Benihana. So I was all ready to, uh, to live it up and show my kids a great time. And it wasn't exactly as I planned it, you know, even, uh, the embassy suites wasn't quite as good. Um, they used to have, I remember when I was a kid, you'd go down there they had the happy hour, you know, and it was, it was like a big thing. There was a ton of people. There was a bar with a server, and we go get the kitty cocktails and all that. They might have had something like that. I don't even know. But if they did, I think it's like, come grab some, you know, because of COVID. So come grab some snacks and run. Like, <laughs> flee the area. And then, you know, breakfast. We When we went to uh, Embassy Suites once out in Ohio a couple of years ago for training, I stayed. we stayed at an Embassy Suites for like two weeks. The breakfast was just ridiculous. Like, they'll make you anything you want. They got a big griddle. They make pancakes, omelets, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's just a massive spread. Well, of course, COVID. They give you, like, three hot options, and they have to scoop it for you, like a, a school cafeteria. And then you get to pick from, like, you know, fruit, um, peanut butter, and water. <laughs> it's like, you guys are killing me here. And we got Culver's instead of Benihana. So, not, not making the memories I was hoping for. And on top of that, part of the reason I thought I was going to be able to squeeze this in, apparently the embassy suites, the entire hospital forgot to set their clocks back. (laughs) My wife asked for a 7.30 wake-up call. They wake us up, sure enough, you look at the clock, oh, it's 7.30, grab my phone, nope, it's 6.30. My wife said, no, it's not, it's 7.30, looked at the clock. Nope, 6.30. So I got an extra hour, got ready to rock and roll at 6.30 because uh, not only was our clock set wrong, but the entire... uh, Hotel system was like, no, we're not setting the clocks back. So they're just waking everybody up an hour early. (laughs) Oh, whatever. Also, Illinois drivers. My goodness. What a disgrace to humanity. But I'm back, and I'm going to give you this here Thursday show. It's kind of crazy. So so what we're going to do, first of all, we're going to do Laughing at the Enemy, which is just the segment. That's what I call it for now. I don't really know. It doesn't matter. The name isn't that important. I tend to like Laughing at the Enemy. 
But um, I want to start with some news and notes. The, the, the funniest thing, it feels like there is a massive amount of news because news has been pretty crazy around the Green Bay Packers especially. Um, but really, there's nothing. Uh, David Bakhtiari was activated. Apparently, this was the deadline, so he needs to be activated. That doesn't mean he has to play necessarily, but it's like, all right, you you, you got to get up and like be a part of the team. They're like, all right, yeah, yeah, he's part of the team. But he, he, may, he may not play. So what that means is he's now going to show up on the injury report just like everybody else that's hurt, and we'll have to go through the injury reports and see, you know, did he practice? Um, is he probable, questionable, doubtful, et cetera? And so, and we were expecting that. Um, I was getting very nervous because they waited until the last second to be like, all right, fine, he's activated. But um, yeah, they, they did decide to welcome him back to the team. So David Bakhtiari's kind of back, although he's, again, big news, but not really news. Like, he's back? Yeah, technically he's back. So is he playing? I don't know. Well, if he doesn't play, is he going to be back soon? I don't know. Is he going to play this year? Well, probably, or they wouldn't have activated him. But you mean like the regular season, though, right? Eh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, there was also some other news about uh, Jair Alexander, for example, was showing up to um, to training camp, or not training, to, to the whatever they do, during the week where they practiced a practice, I think is the word I'm looking for. He was there. He didn't do anything, but he was there. So we're kind of moving in the right direction. But in terms of kind of like I've been talking about with Jordan Love this whole time, like stuff happened and it makes us feel a certain way. But in terms of what new information do we have? There really isn't any. Like, like I said with Jordan Love, like unlikely he's going to be a stud quarterback, but he might be. And then he played and the game went horribly it's like, well, what what changed as far as our overall stance? Nothing, right? Again, big news for David Bakhtiari. How much does it change our overall view of what's about to happen, right? He's getting close. He should be back kind of soon, but I'm not sure. What new information do we have? He's close, probably going to play soon, but I'm not sure. Okay, what about Jair? He was at practice, right? Yeah, dude. What do you think about Jair? Well, probably going to play this year. Not sure if it'll be soon or not. Does this change any of that? No. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Is he going to play this week? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. About that. You know. So that's why you tune into the Packernet podcast, though, so that when you look at the sea of news, you can come here and be like, tell me what it means, man. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. Doesn't doesn't mean anything. So thanks for coming, though. I'm like the circus of Packernet Podcast. You know what I mean? Be like one of, if one of the clowns went to the front and was like, I want to talk to you guys about elephant biology. And I'm like, just dance, you dumb clown. Like, all right, fine. You're right. I'm, I'm just a, I'm a clown. I'll do clown things. I'm not here for your analysis. Make fun of people and yell. Fine. On top of all that, we have more massive non-news with Odell Beckham Jr. And we have now done this about eight different times. Apparently, but maybe, and also possibly none of this that I'm about to say is real, Odell Beckham is considering different teams and is strongly considering the Packers. Again, might be fake. Don't know. Maybe the Packers are pretending and they fed that information. Maybe Odell's feeding that information. Maybe it's real information. I don't know. Also in the news in regard to this situation, the Packers have lowballed Odell Beckham. Don't know if that's real. Don't know if it's true. Could be... Fake news could be real news, could be half-truth news, could be fake news that's actually true, but they didn't know it was true. They made it up and turns out they were correct, which is what some people on Twitter literally do. They make things up and hope it happens so that they can be like, see, dude, I got sources. And they're wrong 900 times, hoping that that 901st time they get some clout. And then they do. They get about 1,000 new followers. And then what, what, what happens after that that's kind of funny is um, whenever people come around, they're like, dude, this guy's a fraud. They're like, are you serious? He nailed Jalen Smith to the Packers. He literally called it before anybody else. So, uh, obviously, duh, he has sources. But anyways, uh, apparently, Odell's going to take a couple days to mull it over. Um, We do know, because it's coming directly from these people, uh, Devontae and a few others on the team have been lobbying. In terms of Devontae, he's directly communicating with Odell, which is probably the reason why, and I think Odell... I, I, my brain is so bad, my memory with stuff. 
But I, I specifically remember hearing that Odell really wanted to play with Aaron Rodgers. Like just, this is pro- probably because we've been through this 700 times, we've heard this before, but it's just a place he'd like to be. He wants to be with a really good quarterback, and he knows Rodgers is a really good quarterback. He doesn't want to be in a situation where he runs a great route, gets open, and either the ball is just thrown who knows where, or he just doesn't get seen. He wants to be with a guy that's going to know when and where and how to get to Odell so that his talent is not squandered. Um, And so if we piece all this together, again, assuming any of this is true or not or whatever, he would like to be a Packer, but the Packers are not supremely interested, but they offered him a low offer, which doesn't make a ton of sense. A lot of this doesn't make sense. For example, uh, there's a lot of people that believe that a lot of, saying the same phrase every time, that players will point out the Packers to raise their value. So they'll say things like the Packers are supremely interested in Odell Beckham, um, you know, for example, Odell's camp will leak that to Ian Rappaport. Ian Rappaport will blast it all over, and then other teams are like, ooh, we better up our offer because the Packers really want him, and he probably wants to go to the Packers, so we're going to have to go above what the Packers offered because we know Odell wants to go there. The, the problem I have with that is that it really hurts you if you actually want to go to the Packers. If you don't want to go to the Packers, it's perfect. Just throw it out there. The reason I say that is the same reason why if you go to a car lot, the one thing you don't want to say in front of the car salesman for example, you're there with your wife, and the car salesman walks up and he says something, you know, sleazy, and you're like, yeah, dude. And then you look at your wife and you're like, I tell you what, though, this is the car right here. Gotta have it. Don't say that. Because then your negotiating power goes out the window. If you tell that man, this is the one, I gotta have it, he knows you're probably not gonna just, you know, if you say, but I want $5,000 off, and you laugh in his face, he's probably not gonna go, eh, fine, we'll go find another one. Like, really? You probably won't, right? Because you got to have this one. So I think you'll probably pay list price. You're, you're undercutting your ability to negotiate. Likewise, if you're Odell Beckham and you say, I really, really, really want to go to the Packers more than any other team. And then uh, the Packers are like, hey, we're a little bit interested. Here's a million bucks. And you try to go back to the Packers and say, hey, somebody's offering me two and a half. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll come to you if you offer us three. The Packers are going to laugh in your face. No. Why would I, why would I offer you more when you want to come here? You want me to beg you? You're the one that's dying to come here. You, you're desperate for us. We're not desperate for you. We're fine, dude. We're seven and two. We were almost eight and one with Jordan Love at quarterback, completing like 14 passes. <laughs> we almost accidentally beat the Chiefs. Why would we fight for you? I made you a competitive offer. If you desperately want to be here, take it. If you don't, I don't care. The point is the Packers have all the power and they know it. So that's why I, I, I struggle with the whole, they're just using the Packers. Unless, again you have no interest in going there. I mean, I guess you could say we, you know, if you wanted to just be honest, you know, Packers are like, well, you know, you're the one who desperately wants to, oh no, we just said that for the media. We actually don't really want to be here, but if, you, if you're interested, it's like, okay, that's that's a cute tactic. Get out of here, sleazeball. I'm not dealing with that. Get out of here. Tell the media you're desperate to come here. You tell me to my face you don't want to be here. Get out of my face. So again, that doesn't make any sense. Likewise for the Packers, it, it seems not... You know, there's some theories in terms of, you know, they just want to make it seem like they're making an effort. I don't really buy it. I think the Packers either didn't make an offer, which is possible, that the story, the, the idea that they made an offer is just fake, which I believe has happened several times. We've heard about the Packers have interest. We've heard all these things. And Brian Gutekunst comes to the, the podium and says, we did not make a call. I, and in, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it was about Odell. I'm tempted if, if this wasn't going to be a long night as it is, I'd be tempted to go find that audio, but I I probably wouldn't be able to find it, and maybe I'm incorrect anyways. That's one scenario. I think the only other scenario is they are interested at a certain price, and they offered that price and nothing else. In other words, they're not really low-balling. They offered what they think is, 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 is the proper value for Odell based on the usage that their team would use them, right? Like, we're not going to use you as our X receiver. We're not going to, you know, we've got a slot guy and his name is Randall Cobb. We've got Devontae. We know we're going to play Lazard. We know we're going to play MVS. So we're going to use a guy like Odell Beckham, but he's going to be a rotational football player, right? And so whereas another team might make him like a legit number two, the Packers probably wouldn't. And I know that's going to make a lot of people, yes, they would. They absolutely would. Dude, he cleared waivers. All right, let's just calm down with the he's a freak and everybody knows it. He cleared waivers. In other words, out of 32 teams, not one said, yeah, we'll take him. Like, we'll just take him. We'll just, we're just going to take him. They, they, didn't, they had the option 
if they just raise their hands, again, we're talking about he's an elite football player, top tier. He's going to be your number one. If not, he's going to be a dominant number two, like in Cleveland, basically. He's your kind of number one-ish, number two-ish, you know, Jarvis and Odell. You have that ability for what? What was it, $7 million or something? I, I, I heard so many conflicting reports on how much it would cost. But again, he's a freak, so it doesn't really matter. Raise your hand and you get him. Literally any team that would have said, I'll, I'll take him, you get him. You just get him. Nobody did it, not one. So let's calm down with the he's a freak thing. So I think the Packers really just look at their, their situation and they say, you know, you got to talk to LaFleur, you got to talk to Rodgers, you got to talk to some of the other guys. Um, and I, I do think you should talk to Rodgers. I know that's kind of a weird topic, but just in, again, from a, from a locker room perspective, I mean, is, is this going to be okay? Is this going to be a problem? Do you utilize, do you see any, foresee any issues, whatever? Um, you talk to Matt LaFleur and say, based on your game plan, um, and again, I don't think they really have holes at wide receiver. You can maybe upgrade, but you know, in terms of this is what I would like to do and we can't because we just don't have the people, I don't think that that's a reality for the Packers. But you know, you go to Matt LaFleur and say, what could you do with a guy like Odell? And it's like, well, you know, we, we've got a, an offense built around the guys that we have. You don't want to start throwing stuff away or adding in new pages or anything necessarily or taking roles away from other guys who have been practicing and training to do this stuff for years so that Odell could maybe do it better. But, you know, we could could throw him out there once in a while. We got a couple things that he could probably do better, you know. In other words, one thing to consider is, you know, we talk uh, specific things like slot receiver is Randall Cobb, or if you want a deep threat on on a certain play, you use MVS. If there's any uh, amount of blocking on a play, or, or even just you want to utilize the size and strength of a guy like Lazardi on a certain route or whatever. You've got those guys. What about, let's just say, a two-wide receiver set where you're running a play where you just basically want two Devontes, right? It's not a, it's not a necessarily a deep route. Could be, I don't know, but you just want two good wide receivers. I feel like it would be Odell and Devonte, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm guessing there would be situations and opportunities but it's not going to be as much as other teams where he's just going to be your, your number two. He's going to be out there basically as much as your number one. He's not going to come off the field very much. And so based on that usage, you make an offer. And it may have been lower than other teams because they're less interested. But again, what value are we planning on getting from Odell? You look at the total snap count. His value times how many times he's on the field brings you to a certain value. If he's on the field less for the Packers than he is for the Chiefs, Chiefs are going to have a higher value. Chiefs are probably going to offer more money. And some other teams probably come up above just because they're much more aggressive. And the Packers are somewhat aggressive, but they're not reckless. And they're never going to get desperate, especially for a guy like Odell. They, they just don't. They don't get desperate. That's why usually those the real big name top end guys, they go to some other team. The Packers don't usually get those guys. I'm not saying they're not interested, but they, you know, guys like Razul Douglas end up coming here instead of Stefan Gilmore because People really, really want Stephon Gilmore, and they offer more than what the Packers think he's worth, and so he just goes where the money is and, and whatever else. Maybe that's not the best example, but whatever. I think that was a trade, but you get the point. But we'll see. Um, supposedly, as far as the best information that's out there, which all may be fake, may be real, I don't know, is that Odell Beckham is choosing between a handful of teams. The Packers are one of those teams. He really wants to come to Green Bay, but Green Bay offered him a low amount of money, and he's going to mull that over, and we'll see what he comes back to. But apparently, he said he's going to take a couple days. So um, this is via Kim Jones, whoever that is. Let me see who Kim Jones is. NFL Network, W Fan, Penn State, Instagram, Kim Jones Sports. So now you know. Um, from Rap Sheet and me, indications are that Odell Beckham Jr. is, quote, going to take some time, unquote, to decide on his next team, and that decision is, quote, a few days away so stay tuned. Um, the other thing that annoys me about 90% of these tweets is even the wording, which is honest, and I appreciate that, but um, really indicate that they don't really know for sure what they're talking about. Indications are that. In other words, they didn't hear from Odell or anybody that is a direct source on this. What they're hearing from some third, fourth party gives them the impression that it's probably going to be a couple days, but they have no idea. And that's what most of this stuff is. Fourth ca- f- Fourth hand accounts and reading between the lines. Anyways, that's the news. Uh, why don't we just what kind of a ways into this? Why don't we take a break right here? Um, Patreon.com forward slash pack underscore dad if you want to support the podcast. When we come back on the other side of this, we'll make fun of some of our arrivals. <laughs> 
which is pretty much just the NFL. We're just going to laugh at other teams for being garbage. Trying to think of some kind of a way to keep this flame stoked with Patreon. We've had some uh, some real progress here. I got to think that through. I think we've added 18 new patrons this month. Not in, that doesn't even include the amount of people that have increased their uh, pledges, which is fantastic. But I would like by, by the way, technically by my birthday, by the end of the month, November 30th, if we had 300 patrons, that would just be peachy. That is 27 patrons away. Also, if you're giving a buck on Patreon, love you guys. Biggest group of donors, I believe, is the $1 tier. If you go to that $2 tier, just saying, you get the podcast early and ad-free. Just, just think it over. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. I want to tell you guys real quick about our new sponsor, Factor. Factor makes delicious, ready-to-eat meals, and they get sent right to your door. They have 35 different options every single week that you can choose from including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. There's no prep work. There's no messing up six different bowls, mixing stuff. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. No prep, no cook, no cleanup. Factor is also very flexible with your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing between 6 to 18 meals per week. You can also pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved. So head to factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 and use code packdaddy50 to get 50% off. That's code packdaddy50 at factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 to get 50% off. Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard in your entire life of test driving a phone network? Well, now you have, because U.S. Cellular is going to let you test drive their network for free for 30 days. So anywhere you go where you got some dead spots, where your service isn't super strong, you're trying to listen to the podcast and it drops out when you go here because you got no internet service anymore, real simple, just whip out your phone, do a little beep boop bop boop that's you pushing the buttons to go to the right place and you can get the app and try it out for yourself so go ahead and test drive u.s cellular's award-winning network free for 30 days that's u.s cellular built for us terms apply awards based on open signal independent data so go to uscellular.com for all the details This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. So I think what I want to start with today is a team that um, we probably don't like a ton, and they're going through a bit of a crisis now, and um, not exactly sure what to make of this team, but hopefully this is a team that is just pure trash. And they had a shot, and we thought maybe they were good because they stomped us out in week one. Um, They went on to win a good share of games and then lost their quarterback, and this past week they lost to a complete garbage football team in New Orleans Saints. And you know what's really funny about that game? We didn't really recap any of these games. The Falcons were destroying the Saints, and I was so happy. And this was when every game was just going perfectly. And then a couple of them, like the Vikings started to come back. The Saints came back. I think the Saints were actually winning. And I remember being so mad because I just thought, I should have known. The Falcons give up leads more than any team I've ever seen, ever. It doesn't, it shame on me for not knowing better than to just know that the the Saints were going to come back and win this game. And somehow, the Falcons actually rallied and beat the Saints. That never happens. That's something that I think really should go in the L column for the Saints, because that's just, that's automatic, right? The Falcons implode, they had a lead, and then they realized, you know what? They've, they got imposter syndrome, we don't belong here, this isn't for us, we don't win games. We lose games because we're trash, and um, they implode, and other teams surpass them. The Saints couldn't do it, though. 
they couldn't get the job done. And the, even the Falcons are probably confused walking out of there with a win. So this is a clip I pulled up from uh, Saints Happy Hour. And again, it, it's just nice because as I said before, and if you're new here, this is kind of the, the theory behind all this. A lot of times we look more critically at our team than we do at other teams. And we look at their record and say, that's such a good team from top to bottom. And that's such a good team. And they have no weaknesses and their fans are just cheering. And it's just this big behemoth that can't be stopped. And we're over here like, oh, we keep losing players. And there's so much drama. Rodgers, that one pass, it was off, and he's not playing like an MVP, and we can't win, we can't, you know what I mean? And so it's nice to just come check it out and be like, so what are you guys talking about? And they're like, our team sucks, and we can't do anything, and we're pathetic. And it's like, really? That's crazy. I mean, we're not pathetic. You guys are pathetic? That's kind of pathetic. Sucks to be a Saints fan. I want to get the Sean Payton sound, because I want you guys to listen to the Sean Payton town sound, because he, to me, sounds like the rest of us. He is sick and tired of the wide receivers being a trash can. Thomas, play that sound. Man, he had a few throws in there that were, I mean, not primary receivers and played with poise, brought us back. I thought overall, uh, I felt like it was good. Um, And then, of course, we'll look at it and and grade it. But I thought we dropped a few balls, uh, more than our fair share. And like I said, you know, we're third and long. I don't know how many times with the, the penalties in the first half, but it's frustrating. He's fed up. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me, Dave. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, a, a, everyone and their mother, you know, Ray Charles <laughs> could have seen how horrible uh, the Saints wide receiving core was. I mean, it was very... Uh, you know, and to, and to me, to me, like being there in person and seeing it in firsthand uh, and up close and personal, uh, it was it look it looked even worse. It looked even worse than I think it does on TV. And you know, here's a question: you, you've got you've got a, you've got you, you've got guys that are just these are second and third third tier guys that you're asking to be to you're asking to be number ones and number two i I just want to go back real quick to how much these guys are paid it's like besides traquan who was like a third round pick and is still on his rookie deal um those guys are all making the nfl equivalent of minimum wage right i mean kenny stills is on a minimum veteran deal deontay was a udfa alloway was a udfa i mean these guys are paid about what they're worth. <laughs> Look the at NFL. this. I had Thomas create us a drop reel. I don't know. This. Yeah. Well, where's the Benny Hill music? I told you guys I wanted this. <laughs> I don't know. I think you, the Benny Hill. This is not funny though, Dave. I think he needs the sad violin well, for this. And a lot of these. <laughs> and I'm, I'm being dead I mean, serious. Look, a lot oh, of these are were on my side of the field, like and right in front of me. And I remember, like, I remember seeing these, and it's just, it's like very frustrating. Again, this is the team that, in my mind, I keep coming back to and saying, if we face this team. I'm I'm gonna just assume we're gonna lose because this is the team that beat us and we just you know it, it it's gonna be, t- dude they they have, again first of all they don't have a quarterback right now I mean they, they of course they do technically but Drew Brees is gone they kind of had two guys that are not legitimate in Jameis who I mean let's be honest he lost his job for a reason and Taysom who you know he's a cool gadget guy and he can be dangerous in certain situations but is he like a legitimate four quarters, 17 games a season, going to win you a Super Bowl kind of quarterback? I don't think so. And they're talking about these wide receivers, and it's like they can't catch. And I know you couldn't see it, but they played the highlight reel. It was a joke. I mean, it was it was, it was was bad. I mean, it's one of those things where if, if, if any of our guys even did that once, Packer fans wouldn't let that go for at least a week. I mean, MVS has a, an occasional drop, and we crucify him constantly. This was just some of the most pathetic. I mean, there was like a guy diving. It was more like a slide than a dive, and it just kind of hit him in the stomach, and he just kind of flailed like, oh, like he like he didn't know how to fall right or slide properly, and it was just it was very unnecessarily chaotic. And it's like, dude, just just grab the ball. Like this is kind of basic stuff here. A lot of jump balls that hit guys in the hands, and they just couldn't come down with it because there's people around them. And you know, I mean, it 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 again, it gives you a real appreciation for the Packers, where it's like they don't drop stuff. Like, occasionally you'll see it, like, Devontae will drop one one time, and it's like, dude, the, the world is about to end. Like, when Devontae drops a pass, I peek out the window. 
I'm looking like, is there an asteroid coming? Is there like a horn blaring from the heavens? Like something, something's about to happen. Are my feet getting super cold because hell froze over? And that's true of Lazard. It's true of Tunyon. It's true of Randall Cobb, who I think massively underrated hand. That dude, especially with some of those Jordan Love throws, I think we just forgot how good his hands are. That dude's got some hands. How about our running backs? A.J. Dillon. Are you kidding me? The whole knock against him is that he's a terrible receiver. He's got, you know, block hands. That dude has had to catch. Every, every one of his receptions, or at least 50% of his receptions, it seems like, are unnecessarily difficult. And um, he catches every single one of them. Aaron Jones is a fantastic receiver. I don't know, man. But that's the Saints. They're they're just kind of they're just kind of laughing at the state of of kind of how bad their team is. We're not doing that. I've got uh, we we got to kind of keep this thing moving. But I was going through a couple different. Um, I like to go through a bunch of different channels just to see who did videos and just listen a little bit to what they had to say. I'm not going to play a bunch, but there was a pretty funny one liner here. This is from the PRO Media Network, New Orleans Saints News, and uh, you had. The apparently like the main host kind of go through, give a little overview, and he just introduces people. And uh, this is how the first person, after being introduced, comes onto the stream. What's happening, brothers? What's up? What's, What's up, up, man? You say the Saints ain't fall yeah. flat. Well, they sure fell horizontal. Then I don't know what you want to call it. I always love it when you've got because you you got different personalities, man. And everybody's just different. And it's nice when everybody's just allowed to kind of be who they are. And obviously, Q on this show is just sort of the the matter of fact, like I'm, a, I'm a fan. I'm, I'm just the guy that always loves my team. I always support my team. We did our best, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And so he gives this overview. <laughs> That's just very, you know, eh, it wasn't great, but whatever. And DC comes on. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. He said they didn't fall flat. They sure fell horizontal. <laughs> oh. Anyways, why don't we move on? We're going to move on now to the Dallas Cowboys. We're not, we're not going in any kind of particular order. Like last time, that takes too much effort. I'm just going down the line as it's laid out here at NFL.com. This would be one that would be nice to save toward the end because it's kind of hilarious. Dallas Cowboys got spanked by the Denver Broncos. By the way, kudos to me, who didn't put money on that, but instead put money on the Rams and lost it, but that's fine. It's fine. It's no big deal. But I said, this feels like a game the Cowboys could lose, right? It's Mike McCarthy. He's got his offense. The defense is kind of shaky. What did we always struggle with with Mike McCarthy? It was teams that aren't that great, but they got a scary defense. This game at one point was 30 to 0. It was 16 to nothing at halftime. I believe it got to 30 to 0. Cowboys kind of had some garbage time, you know, whatever. I think fourth quarter kind of quote unquote came back, scored 16 points to make it 16-30. Um, they got whooped on, but I've been, I've been sleuthing a little bit and the, the, some of the guys I wanted to go to, um, I wasn't able to go to because they were very calm and that kind of annoyed me. Law Nation is a guy that I worked with, real big Dallas Cowboys guy. Uh, he's got a real solid channel over there. Um, but he was real calm about it. He said, normally during these losses, I'm flipping tables, but you know, sometimes you get a little overconfident. And I said, you know what? I appreciate you. You got a great channel. Can't use this content. So we're <laughs> moving on. And then I said, you know what? This is, first of all, there's 7,000 Dallas Cowboys YouTube channels. Second of all, Dallas Cowboys fans are kind of known for being little irrational. I've seen um, throwing TVs, literally shooting TVs, um, throwing things <laughs> at, uh, you know, at or around family members. Somebody out there is got to give me the content I need. And so I come across Dallas Cowboys fan 1980, and the second video I see here is arrogant Dallas Cowboys fan get embarrassed at home, and I said, here's my guy. This is the guy we're looking for right here. Before that video, though, there is a halftime update. Cowboys down at half versus Broncos 16 to 0. He spent three minutes, literally three minutes, pacing back and forth. Come back to the camera. No words. Walk away. He's just... And I, I'm smiling the whole time because I'm like, this is this is my guy right here. This is my I, I got to bookmark this guy. In fact, I need to start doing that, saving these channels so I can come back to it week after week um, to get the content I need because I need some hotheads, man. We need the hotheads. Keep in mind, this is halftime, right? 
notice the title. This is not the final result, which got much worse. This is it's just sixteen zero. They're down sixteen. They're you know we never know. It's we'll see what happens. I don't even know what I'm watching. I can't really even find the words. I highlighted my big bro's comment because he taught me everything I know, pretty much. I'm disappointed right now. I'm that parent right now. When your kid messes up and you know they know better, but they mess up anyway. And you've told them time after time, after time, after time. And they still go out there and mess up. And you're like, when you look at them in their eyes and they try to explain to you what happened, why they're in trouble. And you just say, get out of my face. That's like, and just leave them standing there. Like, cause if I say anything, if I get up out of my chair and people ask me, oh, you need to go to a game. No, I don't. No, I don't. No, I'm good right here. Cause my temper is too bad. <laughs> I don't belong there. I don't give a damn if we are playing at home. I don't give a damn if I ran into Coach Bones out there. I took a picture with Coach Bones yesterday. I don't give a damn about all my fans that were out there asking me for autographs and take a picture and all that stuff. I don't care about none of that stuff because don't none of that shit matter. Right now is what matters. So I, I'm okay watching the game right here in my house because of this shit right here. Because if I were to spend my hard earned money, and I'm not, I don't care about the second half right now. I don't. Right now I'm analyzing. This is, a, this is an analyzation. This is a review over the first half. So don't nobody get in here talking about, oh, we're gonna tell, we're gonna bring it up second half. I hope so. But right now, I'm talking about the first half. And if you don't want to hear any any anything about the first half, you can go right now. You can go to them other channels, you can go to them other bull channels on here. That'll, that'll, that'll say exactly what you want to hear. But right now, I am disappointed in the Dallas Cowboys. And I don't want to take too much time with this follow-up video after they ended up losing that game in spectacular fashion. But I found a little snippet that'll pretty much sum up his 57-minute uh, tirade quite nicely. We got our <laughs> whooped today. Does that not feed you? Does that not feed your soul? All right, let, let me give you a little more. Uh, listening to Dallas Cowboys fans squirm and um, just live in misery. That pretty much sums up the day because, you know, people will say, well, Dak Prescott, Dak Prescott looked rusty. I'm not going to say he didn't. But C.D. Lamb didn't catch a pass until the fourth quarter, had drops. Amari Cooper, who had 50 targets going in this game without a single drop, had nobody on him, literally ball right there. Drop, dropped it. You had a, a, a block hunt. Somehow, Denver ends up back with the football. There was not one phase of the game other than you could say Micah Parsons got two and a half sacks. Osa played pretty well. But other than that, the Cowboys literally stunk the place up. They went for it four times on fourth down. Four times on fourth down twice when they were in field goal range and could not convert. So there's a good amount of background noise in that one, but you get the idea. And, you know, the, the other thing, too, is, and I don't mean to undercut what we're trying to do here, which is to just laugh in their face uh, indirectly, I guess. But at the end of the day, too, it, it's it's funny because you can kind of relate to it. You know what I mean? We've We've been there, not as often as some of these other teams, but we've certainly been there, especially when they start talking about every phase of the game. It's like, oh, yeah, I know how that goes. Offense couldn't get going, defense was trash, and don't even get me started on special teams. We've been there. And it's it, again, it's, it's good to hear other fans' misery because it, it really hones in on the point that this is football, dude, even for really good teams. And make no mistake, the Dallas Cowboys are a really good team. Even they go through this where the fans are sitting there like, dude, this team is trash. And, and on that last video, or the, the first Dallas Cowboys one, he was streaming and I could see the comment section on the sidebar. Every comment coming in, this team is trash, this is garbage, they're a joke, they were overhyped, all this stuff. Cowboys fans are giving up, and, and as Packer fans, we look at it, and we'll laugh, and we might say they're overhyped and make some comments, but make no mistake, we'd be scared if we had to play them. They're not the Jets, but they go through the same stuff, and um, 
I'm going to laugh at him for it. Now, the next team I want to highlight is not necessarily a direct competitor, but they're somewhat of an indirect competitor because um, they're one of the top tier teams. And at the end of the day, that's that's kind of more most broadly. These are all the teams that I see as your top competitors, just the top tier teams. Um, generally, you're looking at the NFC champ, the NFC teams, because any number of these teams you may be facing in the playoffs. And there's really, unless you play them in the regular season, only one AFC team you might face, and that would be in the Super Bowl. But the Buffalo Bills got completely embarrassed. And these are the kinds of losses where it's like, okay, well, you lose to the Chiefs, you lose to whatever. Even if you lose to like Washington, it's kind of, you kind of get it, or the Bengals, or in our case, the Saints and the Chiefs, I guess. But when you're really trying to convince yourself that you're a Super Bowl caliber team and you fall to the Jacksonville Jaguars, which, by the way, I got knocked out of my survivor pool because of this freaking game. The Buffalo Bills. And and usually when you see something like this, it's like, oh, dude, Josh Allen got hurt? That's crazy. Usually in games like this, it's it's something catastrophic. They lost 9-6. to six, six points. Let's check in with one of the best teams in the entire NFL, the Buffalo Bills. This was utter... When I say I can only laugh and smile because how disgusted I was of this this display of football we got today. You know what this looked like? You know what? I'm going to apologize right off the bat. I'm going to apologize right off the bat. You guys know I've been making a concerted effort in keeping Rated R Rico away from the screen. I'm trying to better myself. I'm trying not to do the but today's not the day. So if you have children watching this at your own risk, have them watch. But I'm going to be cussing today because there's some people that need to be cussed out. I don't like, where do we begin? The Jacksonville mother Jaguars. The Bills go on the road. Listen, we had an atrocious game last week. We thought, okay, off the bye week. I mean, Bills, are, Bills fans are great at making excuses. We are fantastic at making excuses, right? Do, saying anything that makes us feel good, right? Tuning into channels that are always positive. Guys, it's not that bad. It's only one week. F*** all that shit. You don't come to the Rico Report to hear all the kumbaya b- We don't do that shit here. We keep it real. And this was f- nonsense today. This game was worse than last week. This was worse than last week. This is a worse team than the Miami Dolphins. But here we are. The Buffalo Bills lose. Not a not a 35-34 game. Oh no. I would have enjoyed, I would have accepted that. We lose to the effing Jaguars from the AFC South. We lose to the Jaguars 9 to 6. Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Allen was a star. He was a star and he made everyone know he was a star today. You probably won't which Josh Allen I'm talking about. It certainly wasn't quarterback Josh Allen. That guy was today. He was not. This was rookie Josh Allen doing all the that we didn't. We, we said, put it aside. We don't want that. Man, oh, man. Turn over Josh Allen. Trying to do too much Josh Allen. And I'm, I'm starting with the, I'm starting with the quarterback because that's where it needs to start. What the fuck was that today? We gave you an opportunity to shake it off first week. First week. You know what I'm saying? It's week one. 270 yards. You know what I'm saying? Against the Pittsburgh Steelers, a very good defensive team. We'll give you that. Then we go on to play the Miami Dolphins. We win 35 0. It's masked. But you had an awful game. But it was masked because we won 35 0. We let it be. Still problematic. And then we start going, we went on a run. Then we go up against the Chiefs. We did well against the Chiefs. Josh Allen emerged. He was our guy. We go against the Titans. Josh Allen again doing great. Blunders on the last play. Whose fault? Who knows? All line everywhere. What I'm trying to say is this. He hasn't been without fault all year. But today, oh, today was a doozy. Today was a doozy. So that was a long one. We don't have to shop around too much, but I, I, you get the point, right? And, and the good thing about that, listening to him, 
the way he's laying this out, there are deeper underlying issues that are being masked. Even when they're winning big, Buffalo fans are, are celebrating, but underneath they're kind of whispering to each other, dude, what the heck was that? And so if, if we had been paying closer attention, if I had been paying closer attention, I'm not saying I would have predicted they lose to the Jaguars, but you almost feel like you know that something like this is coming. And we've had that with the Packers, you know, whether that be 2020, 2019, where things are real good, but there's something, 2019 especially, where you see like you have the, the big wins and then you have the narrow wins and you look at both of them and it's like, I, don't, I just don't feel good about any of these wins for some reason. And then you get this real bad loss and everybody just kind of goes, yeah, that makes sense. So I, I, there's a couple more teams I wanted to kind of dump on. The one was the LA Rams. Unfortunately, there are no LA Rams fans, really. Um, <laughs> there's just not a lot of them. And so there's not a lot of uh, Rams channels. I'm sure as the Rams have gotten better, there's been a growing fan base, but it's not the most robust fan base in the world, especially when they move around cities every two years. But um, I found two channels and they were very, I don't know if it's just an LA thing or what, but it was super laid back and like, oh man, that was too bad, but I love you guys. And it's like, all right, I'm out of here. The 49ers are the opposite. I'm not crying, I'm holding back coughing. Um, Lots and lots of very large YouTube channels. And I'm not going to click on any of these. This dude, by the way, is cranking out content. He's doing just in in the last 24 hours, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that would be 12. um, Let's say 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 videos a day. It's no wonder he's got 40,000 subscribers. <laughs> he's, he's getting like hundreds of views per video and occasionally gets like a big hit. And I don't know, man, I guess that's how you do it. But anyways, I just want to read some of these titles without even listening to what he has to say. Just listen to the titles since the game. And there's been literally dozens of videos since that game. Ready? Kyle Shanahan has no answers after the 49ers lose 31-17 to the Arizona Cardinals. Again, these are just headlines, titles to his videos that he's made since the loss. Why the 49ers have to fire Kyle Shanahan. We might have to click on that one. George Kittle explains why the 49ers aren't good. (laughs) You know how happy this makes me? I don't like this team at all. Despise the 49ers, and they have been massively overrated. The media has had a, I don't know if I would say literal love love affair, but it's possible. It would not surprise me. Next, Nick Bosa explains why the 49ers aren't good. By the way, if you didn't pick up on it, this is literally just press conferences with these players, but he phrases it, explains why they aren't good. (laughs) The next video he makes, Fred Warner explains why the 49ers aren't good. Next video, why the 49ers never should have promoted D'Amico Ryans to defensive coordinator. Why Jimmy Garoppolo is not the problem for the 49ers. How the 49ers should replace Mike McGlinchey. That's their uh, long, I shouldn't say long time, but I think he was, he was a top 10 pick. I don't remember exactly what the pick was in the first round, um, playing right tackle. And apparently they want him gone. So news to me, happy about it. How the Arizona Cardinals neutralized Nick Bosa. Hopefully the Packers watch that one. Honest assessment of 49ers linebacker Fred Warner. Oh, maybe McGlinchey's hurt. Whatever. It's still funny. Kyle Shanahan attempts to take responsibility for the 49ers' problems. How the 49ers fans feel about their latest humiliating defeat. Why the 49ers are struggling so much. Jimmy Garoppolo versus Kyle Shanahan. Who's the real problem on the 49ers? From Diego to the Bay, is it finally time for the 49ers to make a quarterback change? Will the 49ers make the playoffs? That one makes me smile. Partially because they're just the fact that they're questioning it, the other part because no is the answer. The answer for the 49ers if they fire Kyle Shanahan. You know how amazing it is to me that Kyle Shanahan, the media still has not admitted that they were wrong about Kyle Shanahan all these years, and you have 49ers YouTubers, diehard fans who are already making multiple videos about how he should be fired. It's not even a question of, is he still one of the greats? It's, who should we replace this bum with? Why the 49ers still have no identity after eight games? 
Why 49ers tight end George Kittle isn't as good as he used to be. Should the 49ers start Trey Lance against the Rams? The only way the 49ers can redeem the 2021 season. Why 49ers fans think the team is struggling. Part 1, 2, 3. Is Kyle Shanahan the right man roundtable? How 49ers fans feel about Kyle Shanahan. Were the 49ers wrong in drafting a quarterback? Proof that Kyle Shanahan has too much power inside the organization. Why the 49ers have no vision. Why the 49ers have made so many personnel blunders since 2017. If I hit refresh, he's probably got four new videos out. Literally, there's a new 15 minutes ago. The ideal replacement for 49ers GM, John Lynch. This dude is a... I mean, he literally... This is just how he lives his life. He's just grinding out content. So... 15 minutes ago, an hour ago, two hours ago, three hours ago, three hours ago, six hours ago, seven hours ago, eight hours ago, nine hours ago, 10 hours ago, 11, 18, 19, 20. He just, he doesn't stop. But this is the state of the 49ers. But you think, well, maybe he's just some disgruntled bum, you know, clickbaity kind of guy. All right, let's check out the San Francisco 49ers report, which is a part of, uh, what is that, chat sports. They all have their own team stuff or whatever. Very first video here. 49ers rumors, Kyle Shanahan replacements, 10 coaches to replace Shanahan, Doug Peterson, Harbaugh, etc. It's the first video. They're talking, uh, apparently this is a rumor right now. Kyle Shanahan is about to get fired. It's just a rumor, but it's out there. And again, the media still has not, I, 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 when I posed it, and but you better believe I'm taking full credit for being the first person to stand up and say, why is he getting so much credit? I will absolutely take credit for being the only one with any common sense among the quote-unquote media people to stand up and say, I, this is wrong. But the thing is, like I say with everything else, I'm not a genius. It's just a matter of looking at basic information and going, um, that doesn't compute to me. But the rest of the NFL media still has not come around. And by the way, it wasn't even that long ago when I had re, re-upped that whole thing. Early in the season, I was talking about him again. I still don't know why he gets so much credit. And I got eviscerated. A lot of different Packer fans were upset with me. Well, you don't understand. Burr, 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 burr. Dude's about to get fired if he doesn't figure it out, which is something he's literally never done except one year of his entire career when everything was going well. He had the most dominant offense. Remember how good the defense was? And as I told you, the offense was technically better statistically. By the way, speaking of taking credit, I also said, that I don't know the 49ers don't lose this game anyways, even without Kyler Murray. Booyah kasha. Anyways, man, it's getting late. Uh, we got to f- flip over to the NFC North and get that rocking. Your main takeaway from this Vikings loss, dropping them to three and five. Uh, it's very simple. This, first of all, this is the most upset I've been after a game in a long time uh, because the malpractice that continues to be allowed is stupid. It is stubborn and most importantly, inexcusable. Um, a lot of people are going to, call for Mike to be fired tonight. I don't think personally that is going to take place. That's my own personal feeling is that the Wilfs are not going to fire him. But you have to call Mike or go go to a post game and say, I don't care what you do. I don't care who it is. Somebody else is calling the damn offensive plays next week. This cannot go on. Um, The scripted plays again, again, the scripted plays, five plays, 50 yard touchdown pass to Justin Jefferson next series, which by the way, continues the script 11 plays, 93 yards touchdown. Oh my God. They figured it out. The offense is good. And Jefferson's a threat. And if you, and if you use both the run to complement the pass and vice versa, it works. And from there, plays three, six, four, one, seven, three, 10 for a touchdown when you had to have it. Um, But it was but the fact that this offense does this week after week after week and the defense shorthanded played a great game. I know they gave up a lot of points, but against Lamar Jackson, I thought they did a great job. And when you ask them to be out on the field for 80 plus plays and Lamar Jackson, this breaking news is tough to play against. That defense was gassed. Clint Kubiak, though, and here's my final point, and here's why he's gone. I, and I don't care. He he can go pick up towels. I, I don't care. Don't, you know, he's Gary's kid. I He can go help with something. But when Mark Schlereth 
who was working the game for Fox today at some point in the game said, we talked to Clint and he said it, and he said he's getting more comfortable with getting plays in quicker as the season progresses. What is this? How I spent my summer freaking vacation with young Clint. Like I got to call plays. It was great. And now I have to go back to school. Uh, This is inexcusable. So people will call for Mike to be fired. And I believe that Mike is in his last year here. But to do what they are doing to this offense with a guy who's never called plays and is clearly in so far over his head um, is ridiculous. Clint Kubiak, by tomorrow morning, needs to be removed as the play caller for this team. So this is now second time around for our friends over at um, Purple Daily, a Minnesota Vikings podcast. Um, It's really nice getting to know some of these, these fine gentlemen. I hope for more continued failure. Um, so that we can feature them more often. I did check out our friends, One Bar and Lepagus. They seem very upbeat and optimistic. I did tell One Bar that he made the show, so I'm a little bit curious if maybe they found out and were like, hey, they're, they're, he's mocking us over there, so let's kind of cool. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying maybe, because uh, they were super upbeat for getting beat. Like, you know, they had a video out... Um, five biggest losers, and they're like, well, we could only come up with four. Like, you liar. (laughs) You're lying. But anyways, um, I'm sure they'll make another guest appearance on the show. But, um, yeah, our friends over at Purple Daily, and listen, I'm I'm legitimately promoting them because you can go here and listen to the rest. I just, we can't do seven different hour-long podcasts, but feel free. If you're digging it and you're like, dude, I just want to listen to them freak out, go for it. Make a day of it. But, uh, you know, anyways, it's, it's, it's great to hear. You know, we talked about the 49ers in complete meltdown mode, and they're apparently, for some really weird reason, about to fire or, or at least are talking about firing one of the greatest head coaches that the NFL has ever seen. I mean, like, ever. Um, you know, you got Vince Lombardi, Don Shula, you know, Bill Walsh, Bill Belichick, Bill Parcells, all the Bills, right? Every Bill. And Kyle Shanahan, man. And for some reason, apparently they don't know that they had a good year that one year or something because they're talking about getting rid of him. Um, the Vikings are are done with, I mean, the Vikings fans are done with him. And, and this is one of those things that was kind of weird that I was hearing before. Um, and you may remember I was talking about how there were apparently some rumblings that I had heard, um, not like my inside sources, but there, there are some podcasts that I like to listen to of people that, claim to have inside information and one of them is quite good in terms of for example uh he was the one that told me that Mike Mayock is basically a joke and is being laughed at in league circles and everything else that seems to be correct the other thing he was saying is that Zimmer was on the hot seat and that he may lose his job if he ended up losing that first playoff game they ended up winning I think that was like the Minneapolis miracle game I'm not sure but I I believe the the idea is that's kind of what saved him he ended up actually getting an extension, which blew everybody's mind. Like, are you serious? And um, now it's not looking so hot. And um, there's another podcast. I'm not going to play any of it, but he was just kind of talking about, you know, they were, they were wondering if he was going to get fired. And he said, well, if they're going to fire him, it's going to be before the, the press conference. He's not going to trot out there and talk and then get fired. But um, that didn't happen. But just the, the fact that they're basically on Zimmer watch on a week-to-week basis and are talking about firing him, and if not him, you know, get rid of the offensive coordinator or something. Just makes you smile, man. But while we're on the topic of uh, firing coaches, let's, uh, let's kick it over to the Bears before we call it a night. All right, Bears fans, the Bears lose a heartbreaker 29-27. to A lot of lack of discipline with penalties. We'll break it all down, but the Bears fought. So do you want Matt Nagy fired? Type F in if you want him fired. If you don't, you can type not yet. But despite the despite the good fight, I I, I still think a a different coaching staff is probably best for the long term. So, well, (laughs) fire them all, I guess. Wonder if any of them can coach uh, special teams. Maybe once they get let go, you think Zimmer can handle uh, special teams? I think we're good on defensive coordinator. I don't know Nagy. Did he ever do that? Should I should check? Nope, he didn't. Shanahan and Zimmer didn't either, so I guess we're kind of out of luck there. I was hoping maybe they had like one stint like back in college in 87 or something for Zimmer. I don't know. 
You never know, man. People do a lot of different stuff. It's, uh, it was the 80s, man. People did crazy stuff. Cocaine and special teams. It was a wild time. But anyways, you should probably check in on the Barroom Network, see what they thought about the Bears game. I feel like crying. I feel like punching something. I feel emotionally a a wreck. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Thank you, Aldo. Anyways, we're going to have to end with The Tape Never Lies. Um, They've got this segment with a lot of music that's very loud. I wish I could make it go away. Um, I contemplated just not doing it. But he's very whipped up. He's very angry. And we've got a... This is one of my favorite shows right now is the uh, the Tape Never Lies Chicago Bears uh, YouTube channel. So um, we'll let it run out for a little bit and then we'll call it a day. Yeah, it is a tale of two halves. In all honesty of truth, that first half of football sets the tone of your preparation and how you come out to play on Monday Night Football against the refs and the Steelers and everything. I'm not going to mince words and play f***ing blog boy with any fun. What I saw was a team kowtowing in the moment. I asked for somebody to f***ing step up. And it's a shame that it has to be David Montgomery and a rookie quarterback and Cole Komet growing up before our eyes. That's what I'm talking about over the B-shoe salesman because he is not the head coach. I don't care how they perform in the second half. I'm looking at fundamental flaws, discipline, not knowing assignment, penalty, timeout, the same until what Shane is talking about. I'm not gonna let it go because I know what it takes to win. As a coach, you have to be maniacal. You have to know the plays in your fucking head, not in a sheet. You gotta know an assignment for the fucking front, how it's gonna be blocked, and how you're gonna fucking choose your personnel to attack. Guess what? They threw the fucking ball downfield. Downfield. I'm not going to pull out my f***ing pom-poms. I'm not. 